Hi, so today I'm going to talk about the new web interface that I've been adding to PredBat. So <clears throat> web interface gives you another way of um, controlling and viewing the data other than through Home Assistant. So this will only work if you're using the add-on installation of PredBat. You can't actually use it with the app Daemon 1, which is becoming um, deprecated now it still works but i'd encourage everybody to update it as soon as they possibly can um because i don't really want to continue supporting the app team and it has too many issues with it um so in the um the add-ons if you have it in installed you will um you'll see there's an open web ui button here um, which will take you to the web interface um, you do need the latest version of the add-on, and also you need to make sure PredVat's up to date as well for this to be supported. Um, in future, I'd like to make this support ingress as well, which is where it shows the web interface inside Home Assistant, but I'm having some technical difficulties making it work. So this will have to do until we manage to figure out how. And if you know how to support ingress, then please come and help me. I'd uh, love to get some support on that. Um, so when you open the web user interface, you'll get a page here um has a navigation bar at the top um with the different tabs and then the data underneath so the dashboard which is the default one now shows you the that status and your battery soc right at the top um then down here it shows the different entities which are created it's the same thing that you see in home assistant um i've hidden the ones that say large data so these are attributes within them so this is the state of the entity these are the attributes on say large data are hidden these are the ones that are used for charts there's no point in showing that here um obviously you can see the different states and, and what's going on at the moment it's not really sorted or anything so maybe i'll figure out a way of grouping these into different things and make it a bit easier to navigate but you can have a look and see what's um see what data has been created and this is the entity name for home assistant so if you want to add it to your dashboard you'll know what the names are here um and so you can have a look at that. I'm not sure how useful this is yet. Um, this is for the prototyping, so please give some feedback on what sort of things you'd like to see here as well. Um, obviously, if you click on the plan, you get the same as the HTML plan. Um, not really any difference there. In the future, I may add some buttons on this plan that actually cause things like force actions to take place. So you can do it directly on the plan. Um, so that's uh, on the to-do list. Um, the config one, you can essentially change any of the configuration options that um, you can also change in Home Assistant. One thing you'll notice is if the current value is in pink, it means you've modified it from the defaults. Um, otherwise, it's at the default. Um, and so I want to change metric 10 weight, for example. I say the up arrow and that changes. And you can see that that's been updated. Um, obviously, the plan will rerun and you'll get a new result from that. Um, change it back again. So it is, it's a quick way of browsing if you haven't got the right dashboard set up. Um, you can also do the drop downs, the updates and the forces and all the rest of it. It's exactly the same as doing it in Home Assistant right now. Um, one page people might find useful, this is a view of how PredBat sees your apps.yaml file. So it'll show you the hierarchy of it. So you can see the boxes are as it goes down into say here this is um, a list of items um, and it shows you the name but it also shows you the current value if that's mapped in so you'll see this is working i've got load energy today and it's 6.7 kilowatts hours so far um, anything that's highlighted in red here hasn't mapped so if i scan down i can see here this charge rate for inverter number and the second inverter hasn't mapped so that's because i've only got one inverter number inverters is one so that's fine if you see something in red that's not expected, then you may have a problem with your configuration. So you can see all of these are mapped OK. Um, you can see I've set a battery power charge curve. Um, you can see I've got two cars mapped in, and both of their statuses are showing as ready. It's actually the same status, so then you've got one charger, even though I've got two cars. Um, and you can see the battery size being reported. Um, charge limit so the second car is essentially like a guest car so if you plug it in it's not um on um autobus intelligent go then it will just know that it's going to charge um so 
that's also up there. So all of these things map fine for me. The ones that are red at the bottom are regular expressions that are not mapping. The PV ones don't map because I'm using the internal red bat soul cast rather than the external ones. So these don't match anymore because it's using the internal. And the serial for inverter two so don't have a second inverter. So my config looks good, but you might spot some issues with yours. Um, so have a look through that. Um, the log file tab by default shows warnings and errors. So if you can see if there's any issues with your current log file, and in fact, you can see I had some errors around here. This was the time that I did some <coughs> updates and rebooted Home Assistant. Um, and here I was getting some problems with freeze discharging. This was because I was using the um, G Cloud integration. And um, after updating it, I had to re-add it again because I've changed the way it's configured. So you might get the same thing when you update GE Cloud. So this log file updates semi-real time. And if you want to just see errors, hit the errors button. Um, warnings is for warnings and errors. And all this gives you everything that you can see. And it's the newest first at the top. So it's pretty obvious here to see what's going on. And then the final tab at the moment is documentation. And that just takes you to the documentation site just to make sure people are aware of it. So at the moment, the web interface is pretty basic, but <clears throat> plan to improve it in the future. Um, so if you've got any suggestions on that, it would be useful. Um, and also, indeed, try and make it so it can appear as a side tab and show up inside Home Assistant once we get up and running. Um, OK, well, that's all for today. Hopefully you find that useful. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching our video. If you found it useful, please subscribe to the YouTube channel um, and also have a look in the GitHub area where you can find the links to the documentation, all of which is um, online here. Um, and uh, if you really like the software, then uh, feel free to um, buy me a beer. Thanks then. Bye.